Hi and welcome to this introduction to the elements of music, another video in the series, and today we are looking at structure. So firstly welcome, um, you're going to find out in this video what are the eight elements of music. I'll give a brief explanation of each of those eight elements of music and then we're going to have a further in-depth explanation of what is structure or some people call it form in music. So the eight elements of music are, if you go in alphabetical order, dynamics, form, harmony, melody, rhythm, texture, timbre and tonality. Each of the elements of music is like an ingredient in a recipe. Just like a recipe needs a little bit of some ingredients a lot more of others, they all contribute to the overall flavour of the dish. The combination and amount of an ingredient is like the chef adding their personal flair and spice to a dish. So too, a musician and composer uses the elements of music to flavour their musical dish to suit their taste and personal style. So if you want a um, an actual definition of each of the elements of music, is these are what they are very simply. Dynamics simply refers to how loud or soft the music is. Form is or structure is the order and arrangement of the parts of the music. Harmony is the instruments that support the melody with chords. Melody is a series of pitches that um, makes a tune. Rhythm is how long or short a sound is. Texture refers to the layers of sound and how sparse or dense the music is. Timbre is the unique sound quality of an instrument or sound. And tonality is the overall sound of the music as pleasant or unpleasant. So let's go a bit further into what structure is, or in this case, as I said, form. What is structure in music? Structure, or form, in music refers to the arrangement and order of the parts or sections of the music. The structure of a piece of music is a predetermined order of each section, and how many times it is or is not repeated. When listening to or playing a piece of music, it is important to know what the structure of the music is, so you can understand how the parts of the music have been put together to make the whole. Knowing what is structure in music, and knowing the different types of musical structures or musical forms there are, can help you understand the music and break it down into smaller sections. When you know what is structure in music, then it becomes easier to anticipate what section of the music will come next. When talking about what is structure in music, it is important to note that both structure and form can be used interchangeably. Both structure and form have the same definition. It is the unfolding of the music over time through the expansion and development of musical ideas. When you are discussing, analysing or preparing to perform a piece of music, it is good practice to know what structure is in the music. The things you need to listen or look for come under the headings of type of structure, identifying the instruments, range, role and register of the instruments in each section, and phrasing in each section, ostinatos and then a diagram or graphic organiser of the overall structure. Each of these will help you to see where the mu music is going. So again, if we just look at these a little bit um, in more detail, so formal structure. So the type means the type or name of the musical form used in the music. Instruments simply refers to identify the instruments in the music. Role is the role the instrument performs in the music. Register is the height of the notes performed on an instrument described as lo um, low or high. Range is the distance between the lowest and highest note performed. Phrasing is the shorter sections that combine to make up the music as a whole. An ostinato is a repeated musical pattern. And a diagram is a graphic representation of the form of the music, form or structure. So let's go into each of these a little bit more detail. So firstly, we're going to look at types of structure. There are many different types of musical structure and form in the music you listen to. It is helpful as a musician to know what is structure in music, in the music you are either playing, studying or listening to. Some of the most common structure in music definitions used are in the list below. Please note that this is not a complete, complete list of every type of musical structure or musical form, but these structure in music definitions will help you start your music appreciation and music understanding journey. When describing a section in a piece of music, it is common practice to use a capital letter for each section of the music. So each time you hear a new piece of um, new section in the music, you give it another capital letter. So obviously you start with A and then you might end up with, I don't know, you might end up at a G or an F or something. 
So here's a couple of diagrams of each of these types of different structures. So I'm going to go into more detail here um, on each of these, but um, essentially though we've got monothematic, which is a single melodic idea that's repeated. Binary is two sections, AB. Ternary is ABA. Rondo is A, B, A, C, A. And you can see there with Rondo, we've got a circle, then a triangle, then a circle, then a square, then a circle. So the circle being A, the triangle being B, then A again, then C for the square, and then A again. And if we move on to the other diagram, you've got theme and variations. So it's a melody that is repeated with a variation each time. So that's why the circle changes color. Through Composed is a music with no repeating sections, and look, honestly, it can be as many sections as the um, composer wants to put in there. Strophic is a piece of music with verses only, so it's a bit like theme and variations. The difference is that the variations are coming in the lyrics, not in the melody. And Song Form is a piece of music with a combination of verses and choruses, usually with an introduction, coda, and solo. So Monothematic is a piece of music based on a single melodic idea. Often the melody is repeated by a different instrument each time. In Ravel's Bolero, this, there is a real, it is a really good example of a monothematic piece. The actual um, theme is quite long, but it is repeated that many times in the piece of music. And you can use that link there or in the description below to actually have a listen to that piece of music. Binary is a piece of music with two main sections, A, B, or A, A, B, B. The song... Um, the folk song Greensleeves is a good example of binary form. In this particular um, example, it uses the structure A, A, B, B. And again, if you want to use the link there or link in the description to actually have a listen to what that sounds like in the music um, and in the song Greensleeves. Ternary is a piece of music with three sections. The third section is a return to the first. So A, B, A. Twinkle Twinkle Little Star features a simple use of the ternary form. In this example of ternary form, in Guitar Tab, which is what you'll see in that link there, you can see the A section, then the B section, then the return to the A section. And if you were um, simply singing it, so it's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, how um, that first bit is the A, and then when it goes um, up above the world so high like a diamond in the sky is the B section, then it returns back to Twinkle Twinkle, and that's the A section. Rondo is a piece of music with a return to the first section with a different section in between. A, B, A, C, A. And it could keep going to A, D, A, E, A, F. It, again, it depends on the composer, but usually it's just in that particular form. The popular classical piano composition by Beethoven, Fur Elise, is a good example of rondo form using the A, B, A, C, A structure. Now, it, it is important to know that in each of these sections, the section doesn't have to be the same length every time in terms of the A section could be longer, the B should be, could be shorter, you know, A again, then C could be shorter. So it's up to the composer what they're doing. Now, um, a lot of composers, when they actually are naming things, especially in the classical era, you know, in those sort of eras, they used to often just call the pieces what they were actually wearing, the type of structure. So Rondo a la Turca is the Turkish um, march, but it's also in Rondo form. So you'll see often it's actually in the um, actual name of the piece of music. Theme and variations. A melody that is repeated with a variation each time. The variations could be changes in note length or added ornamentation to the melody. Mozart's version of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and Twelve Variations is a great example of the musical structure of theme and variations. And again, use that link there to have a listen. Um, it is a fantastic um, example of theme and variations. Through Composed is a piece of music with no repeating sections. One of the most famous examples of music written as a through composed structure is the rock classic from Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody. And again, you can use that particular link there to go and have a listen or in the link in the description below. Strophic is a piece of music with verses only. This musical structure is often used in folk and children's songs. This example from Herman's Hermits is another rock classic. So it's the one, it's a, um, based on the song Henry the Eighth I Am. But a lot of other folk songs um, use strophic form. For me, as an Australian, it's things like um, Wild Colonial Boy that uses the same, um, it's just verse, 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 verse. Um, but other things like if you think of 10 green bottles hanging on the wall, 10 green bottles hanging on the wall, if one green bottle should accidentally fall, there'll be nine green bottles hanging on the wall. That's an example of strophic. Song form. For most of you, this is probably what you listen to um, um, and are more familiar with. It's a piece of music with a combination of verses and choruses, usually with an introduction, solo, and coda. 
The song I'm a Believer is a good example of a typical pop song structure. It has an introduction, verse 1, chorus, verse 2, chorus, solo, half verse, chorus, chorus, and with a variation ends with a coda. And again, there's the link there. Structure. It's the identify the instruments. So when you are listening to a piece of music, it helps to know what's performing in each section. So when you are studying and analysing a piece of music, once you have worked out what is the structure in the music, then you can delve further by closely looking at what is happening musically in each section. The first thing that you should do is to list the instruments that are performing in each section of the music. For this, it might be easier to organise your thoughts by section, then list each instrument in that section. With your sections written down, it should be a less complicated process to discuss the role, range and register of each instrument in the music. Role of an instrument There are four main roles that an instrument can perform in any section of a piece of music. Please note that not every piece of music will have an instrument in each of these roles, especially if it's a solo piece. If it's someone just playing the piano or playing the violin and there's nothing else, then the violin is simply just performing the melody. But in the case of piano, they might be, it might be that the right hand is performing the melody and the left hand is performing the harmony okay, or the melodic accompaniment. So melody is defined as a series of pitches that form a tune. The melody, or main melody, is the part that is most memorable and is often the part you sing along to in the music. Beat. An instrument that performs the beat is often a drum or percussion instrument. The beat is defined as performing the underlying pulse of the music and helps the listener to hear the tempo of the music. Melodic accompaniment. The melodic up Sorry, the melodic accompaniment is performed by any pitched instrument that is not performing the melody but plays along and supports the melody. For example, if there was someone singing and a guitar strumming with the chords, then the guitar would be the melodic accompaniment and the melody would be sung by the vocalist. Rhythmic accompaniment. These are any instrument that performs with and supports the beat. These could be like a tambourine or shaker that plays a rhythmic pattern to accompany the drum kit that is playing the beat. The bass guitar or double bass, or some of you might call it a string bass, are also often part of the rhythm section or rhythmic accompaniment. Even though the bass plays pitched notes, they are often in time and playing on the beat with the drum kit. Register of an instrument. The musical definition of register is the height of the pitch that an instrument performs in. For example, a violin can perform in a higher register than the cello, and the cello can perform higher than the double bass. To describe the register of an instrument, there are two main terms that can be used, treble or bass. A simple way to remember this is to think of a piano. Roughly in the middle of the piano is a note called middle C. Anything above or to the right of this note is in the treble register, and any note below or to the left is in the bass register. Describing the register of an instrument can go even further by adding the terms upper, mid or lower to treble or bass. For example, a melodic line performed by a piccolo could be described as being played in the upper treble register. Another example could be the bassoon performing a melody or melodic line in the mid to low bass register. Range of an instrument the range of an instrument can be defined as the distance between the lowest and the highest note being performed. It is like the range in a set of numbers or statistics. The range of a melody or melodic line can be described as narrow, medium, an octave, wide, very wide, or extensive. A good example of a melody that has a narrow range would be the, in the children's nursery rhyme, Hot Cross Buns. This simple melody uses only three pitches and therefore has a very narrow range. A song with a medium range would be Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. This melody has a range that does not go beyond the octave. An example of an instrument with, a, with the potential for an extensive range is the piano. From its lowest note to its highest, it spans seven octaves. Phrasing A musical phrase can be either melodic or rhythmic. A phrase is like a small musical sentence. To begin to hear a phrase, try listening to a singer performing the melody. When they take a breath or there is a slight pause, that is the end of the phrase. An instrumental phrase can, go, can often go longer than one is sung, simply because the instrument, such as a violin, does not need to take a breath 
and think about it there. So if you've got an instrument, um, say the flute, that is performing the melody, the performer needs to take a breath. So their melodies um, are often not as long in phrasing as, um, as I said, like the violin. When describing a phrase, first listen for how many bars in length it is. Is it being performed in two, three, four, five, six, seven, or whatever number bars long? To do this, you firstly need to work out the time signature. Once you know how many beats are in the bar, you can then count the phrase length. Another way to describe a phrase is by using words such as even, balanced, or symmetrical. A phrase that is even can be divided in half and each half is the same. Phrases that are uneven, unbalanced, or asymmetrical are different on either side. These types of phrases might start high then end low, or they might be heard in the first bar of the phrase and then there is a longer pause before the next phrase begin. This type of phrasing can be heard in a lot of blues music. Ostinato The musical definition of an ostinato is a repeated musical pattern. There are three main types of ostinatos, melodic, rhythmic and chordal. When discussing the structure or form of a piece of music, the main thing is to concentrate. Whoops, sorry, I need to go back. Uh, sorry, made a bit of a mistake there. We'll just start again. So, um, the another name for an ostinato is a riff. A riff is also defined as a repeated musical pattern. The only difference between an ostinato and a riff is that a riff is a repeated musical pattern heard and performed in popular music. Just like an ostinato, there are three main types of riffs. Melodic, rhythmic, and chordal. A rhythmic ostinato is a repeated rhythmic pattern. These types of ostinatos can be performed by any instrument, either with or without pitch. More commonly, though, instruments that perform a rhythmic ostinato are those without pitch and can be classified as an idiophone, instruments that are hit, hit shaken, or scraped to make a sound, a membranophone, instruments with a skin or membrane or can be classified as part of the percussion family. Below is a good example of several rhythmic ostinati or ostinatos performing together in the music. Try working out each ostinato and then performing it. So this is a great example. So again, have a look and have a listen. Use that link there or the one in the description below. A melodic ostinato is a repeated melodic pattern. These types of ostinatos can be performed by any instrument with pitch. In popular music, the electric guitar or bass guitar will often perform a melodic ostinato. A great example of a melodic bass ostinato is in the song Another One Bites the Dust by Queen. Or even from the classic from Guns N' Roses, Sweet Child of Mine, it has a great recurring guitar riff that can be heard many times throughout the song. And there are links to both those songs there or in the description below. A chordal ostinato is a repeated chord progression. Some popular and common chordal ostinatos or ostinati are the 12 bar blues and the ice cream chord change. Below is the Elvis Presley classic Hound Dog, which is based on the 12 bar blues, and then the song Duke of Earl that features the ice cream chord change. Today, many pop songs are based on a four chord progression or chordal ostinato. So one of the things that might help you in using structure or discussing structure is a diagram. So there are many ways to write and notate music. One way to represent the different sections of a piece of music is to use symbols for each section of the music. Below or on the next slide is a diagram that represents a song I'm a Believer performed by Smash Mouth. So this is um, the, the theme song from the movie um, Shrek. Okay, so again, you can use the link there or the one in the description below. So if you have a look here, you've got the key for the section of the music. So you've got a star for the introduction, then a verse is a circle, a chorus, the solo, um, the chorus is a triangle, the solo is a, um, a square, and then we've got the coda there. So an introduction is the beginning of the music, a verse is the same melody, different words each time, a chorus is the same melody, same words, the solo is usually um, the instrumental solo, so there's no one singing. And then the coda is the ending, or um, in Italian, coda means tale for music. So you can see here, just by the graphic representation, that it goes introduction, verse 1, chorus, verse 2, chorus, solo, then it's half a chorus, then the full chorus, chorus with a variation, and then coda. So why is structure important? It is important to know what is structure in music for many reasons. When you understand what musical structure is or musical form is and the common framework that, mu that music is built upon, you will start to understand how to put your own music together in new and interesting ways. 
As a musician, knowing the definition of structure and the musical form will help you to anticipate what section will come next in the music. When listening to a piece of music, just by listening to each section and being able to discern what each section is and the type of structure being used is a great benefit and advantage. When you know what um, are form and structure in music, you will be able to read the map of the music and be able to navigate the musical landmarks within a piece of music that you are performing, studying or listening to. Music Appreciation and Structure To truly understand a piece of music, it is important to know on what framework it is constructed. Constructed, sorry. Once you know the bones of the piece, you can work out how often a section is repeated or if it is never repeated. As a musician, knowing what sections you need to work on and which ones you don't will make the task of learning a piece of um, piece for performance more efficient and easier in the long run. So simply, if you know that there's it's a piece in rondo form and you know which are the A structures or the A sections, you know you only have to learn that once. And then you can work on the B section and the C section. And then all you need to do is work on those transitions going between each of those sections, sections and you'll find it much easier and more efficient to actually learn a piece of music. Next time you listen to a piece of music, try taking note of the different sections. How many sections are there? Are any sections repeated? How many times do they repeat? Are there any rhythmic or melodic patterns in the music? Is there a variation on a recurring theme in the music? What are the smaller phrases or ostinatos that make up the larger sections? When you are listening to your favourite song, try taking a step back and be conscious of the order and arrangement of the different parts of the music. You could even try mapping out the music as a diagram, then try comparing the overall structure to other music you listen to. Are there any similarities? What are the differences? As a musician, in your next performance, try being aware of the different sections that make up the music. How can you add variety to your performance? Can you repeat a section? Can you take out a repeat and add in a variation to a theme? Remember that the elements of music are like ingredients in a recipe. Sometimes it's a good thing to try something new. You never know, you might like the flavour. If you would like a free set of the Elements of Music listening question cards to begin your music appreciation journey, use the link you can see here or use the link in the description below. You might even want to check out the resources that are ready for you to use and purchase or download today in my store, Do Your Teaching Resources. Use the link um, or just Google do your teaching resources and you should find it quite easily in the Teachers page, teachers um, website. Until next time, happy listening, Julia from Julia. Thanks for watching. And again, you can find my classroom resources ready for you to use today over my Teachers Pay Teachers store. Click the link in the description below to find my store. Again, thank you for watching and happy listening.